Our opening hymn is, O Come, All Ye Faithful. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels, O come let us the upright. 
right of heart. Be glad in the Lord, you just, and give thanks to his holy name. A light will shine on us this day. The Lord ever born for us. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, when the kindness and generous love of our God, our Savior, appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us all through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Christ <clears throat> Jesus, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thank you. So usually around uh, Thanksgiving time in particular, and also around Medina County Fair time, although not this year, um, I tend to bake a lot of pies. And uh, in particular, when it's fair time, I do battle with uh, Krishna over at the Lodi site for Scala. So uh, we go head to head sometimes. Um, but in any case, uh, usually the day before Thanksgiving, I refer to it as Pie Wednesday, because like, it's a big baking day. And as I'm baking, I'm listening to different uh, things on the radio, but I try not to give in to listening to Christmas music too soon. I'm kind of one of those where I kind of really have to wait till at least the day after Thanksgiving before I can start listening to Christmas music or anything like that. However, this year I found myself, and I don't know why, maybe it's the pandemic, maybe because things are different, but just feeling like I needed something, a little bit maybe more pep in my step or a little more joy. And so I gave in and I turned on one of those uh, stations that's been playing Christmas music since Halloween. And uh, one of the songs that uh, came on was probably not my favorite, but one that I thought was very appropriate for our, the way we're celebrating Christmas this year. And that one is Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Uh, for me, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas or uh, the Christmas song, uh, those two are just not my usual style for Christmas music in the sense that I'm more a little bit more upbeat, um, whether it's O Come All You Faithful, Angels We Have Heard On High, um, or uh, in a secular way, um, you know, whether it be Rocking Around the Christmas Tree 
or um, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. And one of the reasons, probably the only reason I like I, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas is because it's a universal annoyer. Like there's nobody I can find actually really likes that song, but just because it annoys people, it makes it just makes me laugh and chuckle. But nonetheless, um, I heard uh, I heard in, in in some ways with fresh ears or fresh eyes the I have yourself a merry little Christmas. And when we listen to that song, one a couple things you have to be aware of. One is that um, there's a couple versions out there. Uh, the original version is sung by Judy Garland, and it was in. Uh, written for the show Meet Me in St. Louis. And uh, the reason the song was written is that it's trying to comfort a family who is being uprooted to follow the father's job or job opportunity to New York and leave their beloved St. Louis, leave their family and leave everything that they've known. So uh, this is one way to kind of comfort them in that time. Also, it was written around 1944, so those who were fighting in World War II, it also brought them a little bit of comfort as well. But as time went on, uh, our friend Frank Sinatra decided he, that the lyrics were not jolly enough for this project he was working on, so he decided to zhuzh up the lyrics. I know, yes, I said zhuzh, but he decided to zhuzh up the lyrics so they sound a little more cheery. I'm like, Frank, pick another song. I mean, like, but this is, uh, but this, uh, but he decided to do that. And uh, but anyway, what touched me was a couple times we hear in um, the original version that was sung by Judy Garland. And again, this is the one that she sang. The actual original composer, I think he, his name is Hugh Martin. Uh, the lyrics were actually a little bit darker than that. Uh, you can Google that when you get home. Um, but one thing that gets repeated is next year all our troubles will be out of sight. Next year all our troubles will be miles away. And I don't know about you, but that's kind of like how I'm feeling right now in this time where I'm thinking, all right, in a year's time, hopefully all our troubles will be out of sight, things will be back to normal, the church will be full again, and so on. So hopefully we'll have some semblance of, of uh, normal, normalcy or normality. Uh, but also it does say, it talks about faithful friends who are near to us will be dear to us once more. And I think whether we're with our family and friends or away from family and friends, one of the things that we can also always reflect upon in this Christmas time is, or even if we have, you know, members of our family or friends that have gone on to eternal life, that we remember the sacredness of those relationships and how sacred those relationships are to us and how they uh, nurture us and, and bless us and we're a blessing to each other and so how important those are in our life. Now, of course, too, it goes on to say that Soon we'll all be together if the fates allow, and until then we'll have to muddle through somehow. And certainly there will be a lot of muddling going on. We already have done a lot of muddling, and not for a cocktail, but just in life in general. Um, and certainly we'll have to do a little bit more of that uh, until things get better. But all that said, in many ways, this is and can be and has the great potential, albeit small, to definitely be a merry little Christmas. And here's why. Because I think, you know, one of the things that this Christmas maybe will afford us, even in the midst of all of this, all of what's going on, is the opportunity to, one, connect with that original Christmas experience. What the Holy Family was going through, and what the world that Jesus was born into when he took on human flesh, what was going on in those times. And also it affords us the opportunity then to not only connect with that experience, but also to uh, see it with new eyes. And one of the ways in which we see us with new eyes, one of the things that just kind of touches me is that uh, my nephew, his name is Isaac, and he, he just turned one, year, one years old um, a few weeks ago. I, I like to say last year that he showed up just in time because he wanted to get on, the, on my Christmas card. Um, but he decided he wanted to be a few weeks early so he could make the Christmas card, so he made the cut last year. Uh, but now he's a little, he just turned one years old a few weeks ago, and one of the things I just am learning, and it's something I think we relearn when we see young children, is how they see the world with new eyes, new wonder, and new discovery. And that challenges all of us then to not be the same old, same old, but to see with new wonder 
and to take time to reflect. And so if we think about seeing things with new eyes, let's think about first how the, what was going on when the first Christmas occurred. And if we think about it, one of the things that the entire Israelite community, Israel and Judah, what they were waiting for was the promised Savior to come. They were waiting for that promised Savior to come. And the reality is, is that this Savior was supposed to be uh, firm on the throne, God's throne. His kingdom would have no end. The Son of God. All of these things. But these promises were made to King David via the prophet Nathan thousands of years before Jesus, hundreds of years before Jesus showed up in the flesh. And between that time, what happened was the Israelite community, which was one unified unit, broke apart. Ten tribes in the north, two in the south. So there's a little political unrest. Both Israel, who is known as the northern kingdom, Judah the southern, they both go into exile at different times. So this kingdom, this lineage is somewhat disrupted or destroyed. This holy family of David, kind of underground. And then Judah comes back, although the temple had been destroyed, they rebuild it. And then when Jesus is born in the flesh, we of course had the occupancy of the Roman Empire. So there's a lot going on in the world and a lot of things to say, well, how can God's promise come about? How can whatever, everything that the Lord had said to David, when it seems like the entire world is in chaos and upended, how can this all be put back together? How can his promise come true? You can't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But the reality is, is that the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and pro proclaims the fulfillment of his promise. And the Lord is born. And then we think about also on that first Christmas night. That first Christmas night. You know, when we sing the hymn Silent Night, truly it was a silent and a holy night. Because if we think about how we celebrate Christmas today, not only going to church, but Christmas parties, socials, candy canes, Christmas music, decorations, all these things. That for one of the things I've been really reflecting upon this year is how when Jesus was originally born or when he took on human flesh, nobody really knew that much. Like the whole world around had really not really didn't know. I you know, Mary and Joseph, they're freebies, okay? They're freebies. But the shepherds had the good news proclaimed to them by the angels, the shepherds, by the way, who are relative nobodies and were not trusted among society. And the Magi were always looking for the Savior, or looking for this newborn king, so they recognized the star when it appeared. But really, at the end of the day, the Lord comes into the world in relative silence and obscurity, in the middle of nothing. Like life just went on for most normal people, as if nothing had changed. But what the Lord came to do in taking on human flesh, albeit small, became mighty, although silent, extremely powerful. And so today, as we celebrate Christmas on this Christmas morning, we think about those the circumstances and the ways in which the Lord came into this world and what was going on around that time. And it reminds us that no matter what chaos we are encountering, no matter what struggles we may be facing, that nothing, that one, nothing is impossible for God. And if God can break through all of that, he has the power to transform this very moment and to remind us that hope is not dead. Hope is alive, right here and now. And so we think about, you know, some of the reasons why. Why the Lord came to the earth in human flesh. You know, to not, and I'm sure that the Lord could come up with a million different ways for us to uh, be reconciled, to worship him, to, you know, to make everything all right. But he decided to take on human flesh to show that God desires and his love pursues us. Uh, he wants us to be in union with him or in communion, if you will. But he wants union with us. And when he's uh, 
wrapped in swaddling clothes and put in the manger. You know, one of the things we think of uh, infant wear today and swaddling clothes, we might think of cute little outfits or, or onesies or snuggies that uh, have like uh, monkeys or bears or kangaroos on them. But truth is, is that when a baby in that time swallowing clothes, they say that they were wrapped really tight to keep them warm. Kind of like how bury, uh, bodies wrapped for a Jewish ceremonial burial, wrapped tight. So some scholars even suggest that reflects how the Lord will one day give himself for us in showing us the greatest love is to lay down your life for a friend. And all of this so that we may share in the Lord's divine life. We may participate in the divine life of God and be with him for all eternity. And so my brothers and sisters, as we think about this Christmas, it is indeed a merry little Christmas. We pray that all our troubles and struggles will be miles away. And yes, we will have to muddle through some things. But we are here today, and the Lord proclaims the great news to us that if he can come into the circumstances in which he came in those moments, we think about the chaos that's going on in our world and our lives now, there's nothing that he cannot conquer. No sorrow, no fear, no struggle that he cannot conquer. And he reminds us today in his birth that hope is alive, that the Lord's saving grace that pursues us day in and day out is here for us. It does not abandon us. And it will, gives us the hope that we need to continue to, to continue to follow him and the grace that we need to know that he is with us. So my brothers and sisters, no matter how you celebrate this year, know that the hope of Christ is alive in this merry and little Christmas. One God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For of his men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in our Lord, let us now present him these prayers of intercession. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church celebrating throughout the world, that Christ's birth be a reminder of his abiding presence and an inspiration for service to humanity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders at all levels of society, that justice be tempered with mercy and care for all God's children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families who are unable to be together on this holy day, that they may be comforted in Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and grandparents, that their faith and love be the greatest gift to their children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, that our love for one another will comfort those who find themselves far from home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
according to your will, we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for in your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit to the earth and the work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for in your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit to the vine and the work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. sisters of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May our offerings be worthy, we pray, O Lord, of the mysteries of the Nativity this day. For just as Christ was born a man and also shine forth as God, so these earthly gifts may confer on us what is divine through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of all things, of things vis invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. O holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you personally for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, for they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrate the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth a Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, 
and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised up to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took his precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for it is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death O Lord until you come again therefore O Lord as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you're pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, able to just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation of the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in the peace of Christ. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share of fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Barcelinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. And this we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the 
Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. silent tonight.
plus, correct? Francis, Lord, as we honor with joyful devotion the nativity of your Son, that we may come to know with fullness of faith the hidden depths of this mystery and to love them more, evermore and more, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Before our final blessing this morning, again, please be sure of my prayers and support for a very Merry Christmas, and along with the prayers of Deacon Mike and our entire pastoral staff. And again, this year as we celebrate Christmas, it might be a merry little Christmas, but the hope that Jesus uh, came to earth to give to us and his presence to us are still very much alive, thinking of just how he came to us in Bethlehem specifically, uh, meaning house of bread, and how he feeds us himself with the bread of life and continues to pursue us with his grace no matter where we celebrate our merry little Christmas. It may be small, but it is truly the power of God and his grace is truly mighty. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing. Please respond amen to the following. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by the glorious birth which has illumined this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Mm -hmm. May God, who will in the great joy of his Son's saving birth, be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives, and make you heralds of his gospel. Mm -hmm. May God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realms, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Mm -hmm. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Angel We Have Heard on High. An angel we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain, and the mountains in reply, echo back their joy in his strain. Shall cease to.